Welcome to Taking Care, the show for parents who have realized that taking the best care of a child with a rare disease means taking care of themselves too. Every episode of this show has been designed just for you. Each episode is short. I'm going to share with you practical tips and strategies that you can start to use right away because I love that you're watching, but I want you to take action too. So today, let's talk about stress. We've all heard that stress is bad for our bodies, bad for our minds. And we all probably have been told by a doctor, a boss, a spouse, that we really need to work on reducing our stress. But how do we do that? So to start, let's do a really quick biology lesson. Learn what's going on inside of our bodies when we are experiencing stress. So our body's autonomic nervous system is the part of our body that's responsible for keeping us alive even when we're not paying attention. So things like breathing even when we're asleep, that's what the autonomic nervous system does for us. The autonomic nervous system is made up of two parts, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And they work together um, really collaboratively. So it's not like they're in a battle with each other. It's more of a uh, they recognize each other's strengths. So think of it like yin and yang or Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, peanut butter and jelly, if you will. So the sympathetic nervous system is the part that's responsible for recognizing and responding to danger, distress, um, whether that is internal or external. So it could be a snake in the grass. It could be the sensation of hunger in our belly. When our sympathetic nervous system recognizes that there's something that could threaten us, it diverts all available resources to cope with that and be ready to go into one of our body's three stress responses, which are fight, flight, or freeze. So our digestion stops, our heart starts racing, our breathing gets really shallow, our pupils dilate, all of these things happen when our, auto, when our sympathetic nervous system, excuse me, is activated. On the other hand, our parasympathetic nervous system, that's our rest and relax system. So that's the system that lets our body know, hey, there's nothing distressing to us in the environment or within our bodies. We can really focus on restoring ourselves, relaxing, healing if we're sick. Um, and so that's what people are talking about when they say that stress is bad for your body. What they really mean is that staying in a state of sympathetic nervous system arousal for too long, that's not good for your body. Our bodies were not designed to remain in that fight, flight, or freeze state for very long. But the realities of our modern world and of raising a child with rare disease means that we have more stressors than our ancestors did in a uh, in centuries past. So many of the parents who I work with in my counseling practice know that there are certain situations, certain times of day that are really likely to activate their stress response. Maybe it's sitting in the waiting room before your child's IEP. In this world of coronavirus and remote learning, maybe it's having to go tell your child, hey, it's time to hop on that Zoom call with your class. Whatever it is, we know that there are certain situations that can activate our sympathetic nervous system. And so the question is, what can we do when we don't have a lot of time, but we recognize that we need to go from 60 back down to zero. We need to relax on purpose. What I'm gonna share with you now is a way to take just five minutes and really activate your parasympathetic nervous system in some very powerful ways. So minute one, I want you to spend one minute breathing deeply and intentionally. So some ways that you can do that. Put one hand up here on your heart and the other hand is gonna go down on your belly. And just think about taking a deep breath that really only makes the hand that was on your belly move. When you can breathe in that way, in a way that doesn't really affect and move your chest at all, that tells you that you're breathing deeply using your diaphragm, which is that muscle that um, sits right at the bottom of your lungs. When you do that, you're getting the full benefit, filling up your lungs with, with deep, refreshing air and letting your parasympathetic nervous system know, hey, I'm breathing deeply. I'm not breathing shallowly. There's nothing going on that's distressing to me. So spend one minute breathing deeply in that way. In the second minute, we're gonna move on to getting our muscles to relax. So we're gonna do some stretching, but I want you to just pick one stretch. I'm gonna go ahead and do 
raising my arms and just letting them go in one direction, getting a gentle stretch in my side body. We're not trying to force or twist or push ourselves here. The goal of this stretching is not to increase our flexibility or to feel sore tomorrow. That's not what we're trying to do here. Really what we're trying to do is just breathe deeply, continuing with that big belly breath that we practiced in the first minute and letting our body relax into place, letting it know that you can move in a way that feels good and new, but that is calming, rest, restoration. That's what we're going for. After that, you're going to spend the next two minutes practicing mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is one of those things I hear from my clients all the time. They say, that sounds just too woo-woo. That's not for me. I don't really understand what I'm supposed to be doing. So mindfulness is nothing more than noticing the sensations going on around you and the experiences you're having internally. It's really just bringing awareness to what you're doing. So what I want you to do is think of a food. Um, something that you normally eat sort of mindlessly. Maybe it's pretzels, maybe it's potato chips. For me, it's chocolate. And I want you to challenge yourself to spend two whole minutes eating that treat, whatever it is. So I'll do a, a guided version for you now. So I'm going to start by just noticing the food that I'm going to eat. I'm going to look at the wrapper. I'm going to look at how the light hits it, notice the color, Pay attention to what it reminds me of. And then slowly, on purpose, I'm going to listen to the sounds as I unwrap whatever it is I'm about to eat. And again, I'm going to pay attention to how the color and size of the wrapper have changed the design on it, the weight of it in my hand. I'm going to smell. Think of all the other pieces of chocolate I've eaten that this reminds me of. Just inhaling really deeply and noticing. Now this next part I won't do with you, but go ahead and um, take one very small bite of whatever it is that you're eating and don't chew, don't swallow, just let it sit in your mouth. Pay attention to the flavors that you're getting. Notice the sensations, the mouthfeel. Is your mouth salivating more? Are you starting to maybe feel a little frustrated because normally you would just chomp down and move on to the next bite um, and your body's saying, this isn't how we normally eat this. Whatever those feelings are that you're having, just notice them. They're not wrong, they're just there. When you're ready, after you've swirled whatever it is you're eating around in your mouth a little bit, Go ahead and chew, swallow, whatever, whatever's right for what you're eating and take another bite. And again, very slowly continue through the whole two minutes in this way, just paying attention to what are the memories that these smells and tastes bring up for you? What are the physical sensations that it's causing in your body? And that's mindfulness. Simple as that. Now we're on to the last of our five minutes. And so what we're gonna do in this last minute, if you, like me, have a cup of tea, you can certainly drink that. Part of stress is how we deal with in our body, but part of it is how we deal with the real world stressors that we face. So in this last minute, I want you to think of one thing that you can let go of. Maybe it's a commitment you made that you've realized you don't have time for. Maybe it's a social media app that you could delete off of your phone because you realize it's taking too much of your time. Maybe it's a therapy that you're realizing isn't working for your child anymore. And even though the therapist tells you that it is, your gut tells you it's time to be done with this. Whatever it is, no matter how small it is, Maybe it's just a pair of shoes you've held on to for years that it's time to get rid of. Pick one thing that is cluttering your mind, taking time away from our goal of rest and restoration and say goodbye to it. Cancel the appointment, donate the shoes, whatever it is. I hope that you enjoyed the time we spent together today. Take care.